no, I'll just put this in context. We've got a uh, one of our young lawyers is over in the UK, been over the UK for a couple of years on a sort of working holiday thing. We're trying to drag her back as quickly as she can. And she's still working for us. So she, she, she's a construction lawyer. So this is coming via her to one of our other young lawyers, uh, one of our legal clerks, Teresa. So, hi, Jorgen. I've been doing a bit of research on the United Kingdom's COVID-19 circumstances and came across mood beam, one, wristbands which have been used to gauge how contractors are feeling on site. I was wondering whether there are any plans to introduce something similar in the Australian construction industry. Sorry, mate, it's random, but... <laughs> uh, well, I, I, I would question why we would do it. Uh, um, because I would, um, I, I think it is important that we actually have an awareness that not everybody is going to have a good day every day. So uh, where it's coming from, I think is the right place. We need, to, we need to know that we're turning up to work and sometimes we're turning up to work in a great space and sometimes we're turning up to work in an absolute awful space. Work is a great place to intervene because we will go to work until the last bit of hope has been sniffed out of us because so much of our hope sits in work. So, so that's really good. Now, I, would, I think that perhaps rather than wristbands, we should, we should get to a point where we actually make it a natural part of the conversation to say, how are you really, Michael? And I actually care. And I want to know that because I think that once we have that, um, one of the things that uh, when I said before, when you when we when you talked about what was the what was the reason for behind this, in suicide prevention we have spent an awful lot of time to try to identify all the risk factors for suicide, and the idea was if we could actually get the risk factors for suicide, we could diagnose suicide, and we could we could get up in front of the curve and we could identify people before they acted on it. We have been a hopeless failure in doing that. It cannot be done. Uh, we cannot predict suicide that way because humans are so, um, uh, what do you call it, individual and, and things like, what well, I'm totally all right today, get a phone call, you can't have the kids this weekend. Boom, you know, everything starts again. Well, the only thing we have found is effective is to ask people when they are suicidal, are you suicidal? Are you struggling now? So wristbands is, is, is a good thing, but it, it, sort of, it would rely on me not trusting you enough to tell you. And I would much rather want to, I want to work on the thing where we're saying we actually have to create an environment, whether it is within the legal profession or whether it's within the construction industry, where mental health becomes so normal that I'm saying I'm having a bad back and I'm having a bit of heartache as well. Yeah. Um, that is actually okay because it happens to all of us. So, so I'm just a little bit concerned about trying to diagnose people and that's sort of a little bit where we're going with the wristbands. Yeah, no, that's fine. 